Join me on the Odyssey through the abandoned Lanark District Lunatic Asylum. Discover its thought-provoking past and the patient impact from care in the community. We'll try to get inside and up the tower, then squeeze inside the dark basement before checking out the sad memorial of no longer forgotten souls. And then, crack open the paints to unleash my inner Van Gogh. So we're just parked at Hartwood train station, which gives you access directly to the Hartwood Hospital uh, site. So you can see I'm on the platform and you just walk up the stairs and basically to your left, you're going to have the Hartwood Nurses Home. And to the right, you can walk to the asylum, which is to the north side of the train tracks. And to the south side is the Nurses Home. That's not a nursing home, that's nurses' home. So where all the nurses would have stayed. This complex is massive. It would have housed thousands of patients. There's various station points, I guess you could call them. Uh, not quite a bus stop. It's got electricity. Don't know if there would have been a guard there or something. Call them operation points. What kind of operation happened at them? I'm not quite sure. But being a hospital, I'm, I assume it's to do with guiding visitors and patients to where they need to go because there's not just the Hartwood Hospital and the Hartwood Nurses buildings in this complex. There's also a cemetery and various other small buildings scattered around. So it's a big old place. Very grand, very grand, especially for mental patients. It shows that back in 1895, it was a grander thing to look after people than it is today. Nowadays, we'll touch on care in the community later, but you could argue there is no care in the community. You really do need to be a professional. You can't just be loving and hard working and expect to give a mentally ill person all the support they need. It just doesn't work. Take note, Tories, take note. Why were asylums closed, allowed to get in such dilapidated states? Mental asylums had very dark days and very bad reputations. But one of the key reasons for this asylum and countless others' downfall is the many care in the community initiatives through the decades. It's often attributed to Thatcherism in the 80s. Ensures that the rich get richer and the poor are irrelevant! But the conversation in principle started in the 1950s here in Great Britain. It doesn't take long to uncover horrific atrocities that happen behind asylum walls. Lennox Castle repurposed as an asylum in the 1930s, 25 miles away from here, was a perfectly idyllic setting, just like this one for people to recharge their batteries and recover mental health. But the reality was quite different and it finally closed its doors in 2002 amid a media storm of brutal care and torture of its residents. What got you in here in the first place? Sure, paranoia, schizophrenia, but a quick research uncovers an interesting list. Peter, what are we doing here? I thought we were looking for your mattress. We are. This is a 1950s insane asylum. They use old mattresses to pad the walls of the cells. May I help you? Yes, 1950s doctor. Me and my friends are looking for- Your friends with a negro and a cripple? This man is insane. Take him away. Now, wait a second. You can't do that to- A negro speaking up to a white person? This man is insane. <laughs> now, look, I don't think- All cripples are insane. Euthanize this man. <laughs> Something I can help you with? Yeah, you got any brain-dead women in there you let people have sex with for a few bucks? Sure, come on back. Despite initial good intentions for humane care and treatment to return patients to mental wellness, asylums have long been considered unscrupulous and moral places. If you didn't go in insane, you almost certainly came out that way, is a quote I hear time and time again from patients released. Insufficient and appalling care, physical and sexual abuse from deviant carers, extensive drugging, Controversial and unethical lobotomies are now abandoned practice in the UK where parts of the brain were surgically removed. Patients locked up in solitude, tied up in constricting straitjackets and imprisoned in distressing padded cells or cages, ice baths, agonising electrical shock treatment and aversion treatment for so-called former conditions such as homosexuality that are now just accepted ways of living in modern society. And finally, as a result to maltreatment, sometimes even death. Yes, there were horror stories, too many horror stories and very dark days. But arguably closing these institutions wasn't the answer. 
Emphasis on due diligence and intensive staff training. Adopting new and more efficient techniques to support those requiring professional help would surely be better than abandoning them into the community instead. To think that the best option is always to be cared for in the society is ignorance. Or from a government's point of view, a way to save money. Available beds in the UK institutions has fallen from 150,000 in the 50s to just 27,000. That was from an article in 2012. It's fair to assume that there are less beds now and with a growing population. Or in another way, at least 120,000 people who were deemed requiring professional help are instead insufficiently supported, some of which mentally unstable, a percentage of which will be dangerous and amongst our society. In the community may be the right thing for some, but certainly not for all. With that gradual decline in the 50s, the Iron Lady-led Tory party seemed to cement care in the community after the Audit Commission published a report outlining the advantages of the policy in 1983, detailing a more cost-effective way in making a reality of care in the community. And the rest is history. Saving money instead of lives effectively. Hartwood Hospital went into quick disrepair and lacked funding, and would eventually close its doors in 1998. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to the mental asylum we go. Oh. Five seasons in one day. The wind's not gone away yet though. Pretty cool. Not sure I can get in this wee gap. So this majestic Gothic baronial style building was opened in 1895. Bizarrely, it's the result of a competition and it's following a competition from the Lanarkshire Lunacy Board. Now I didn't just make that up, the Lanarkshire Lunacy Board, that's what I said. You heard right. Um, but it was a competition open to architects to design the Lanarkshire District Asylum. And this is what they done. This was before the days where money was scarce in Scotland. They had money for buildings like this. Look at it. The NHS is now on its knees. But in 1895, they could build twin clock towers. Look at them. Absolutely amazing. It's actually, no pun intended, but it's actually crazy the kind of money that was available for building such a thing. 2024, the UK economy is collapsing. You would never get this kind of money to build a hospital or a school or anything nowadays. Now the absurd thing is that in 2024, you would need seven years of education to be a qualified architect. John Murray was self-taught. No education in the field, just beautiful, just beautiful. And it shows you that education isn't everything. Now I'm not saying he wasn't an educated man or in other fields, However, he wasn't an architect. I wish we were still making buildings like this. I really do. It doesn't take much imagination to see how beautiful this would have been back in the day. I mean, it must have been magnificent. And then you compare it to modern architecture. Don't get me wrong, modern architecture can still be beautiful and, and amazing in its own right. And it's not even for a prince or a king or a queen. It's not for the wealthy. It's for the mental patients. We pretend in 2024 that health and well-being is um, prevalent and at the forefront of society. But would we ever spend any kind of money like this on health and well-being? I don't think so. I don't think so. Can you imagine the billions this would cost to make nowadays? You just wouldn't build like this anymore. 
which is a shame. It's an absolute shame. Because this is the reason why people come to Scotland, to see beautiful buildings like this. And sadly, more and more of them are in ruin. Windows are boarded up, as you can see from outside everywhere. A few drips. The old door, all boarded up windows. It's pretty cool. The old channels for the pipe work, there's all pipes in it. Yes, it runs all the way along, as far as you can go, I guess. That's the most mental insane I've ever looked. Look at that. That's frightening. That's what I look like. If you ever see me in the dark, run. Fuck me. I don't know if that's... Is that an old elevator shaft, or is it actually up into the tower? Oh, look at that. It's an old staircase. Look at that. Very cool. Imagine that. Staircase going all the way up there. I think that goes all the way up into the tower. Must do. The old toilet roll holder, the old plastic, it's not new stuff. But look at this. What's that? Is that like an old, it's like an old uh, elevator door actually. Yeah, it was up the wrong side though. Look at these old tiles. Look at the design on that. That's it. Look at the design of these tiles. Not what I'd call beautiful. <laughs> see the old, uh, see the old brick wall. You can see the old stone walls though. They're very good. The staircase is a bit, um, a bit ropey. Same tiles. Oh, look at this. got so dirty, look at that, there's no staircase left, it's just dirt. You can see down into where we came in. You see the old design on the windows, which is pretty cool. None of this modern shit. You can see out the window here. I haven't seen or felt anything strange in this place. It's a first, considering all the patients that would have been in here with all their bad experiences. I've been to many places and felt strange things and coldnesses and nothing. It just feels very calm and serene to be honest. Strangely, just as I said that, the birds are going wild as if they're going, check out this lunatic over here. Probably talking about me of course. Those handrails still there. Oh, these tiles are a bit nicer. That's more what I expect for tiles for an old place. I get the old pattern down the, down the side. Pretty cool. Look at that. It's a bit of design. It's not too dark in here. See the remnants of the fire. Oh wow. You can finally see up to the clock tower. Just there's the staircase as well. It does look kind of like an elevator shaft. It maybe was a staircase and an elevator at some point. Obviously it would be. It's not looking. I think everything it could have fallen has already fallen. These look like they're fallen because of the fire. Look at that. Lots of metal shrapnel. Look at this. Maybe turn the torch off a bit. Even all these years on, you can still smell the remains of the 
charcoal and the burnt beams from the fire. I'm gonna have a look at this. Is that the old clock? See, there was something from the elevator shaft if there was one. Oh, there's like parts of the clock tower. Look at that, the old cogs. Very cool. Now I'm gonna have to try and get over this. Oh. Look at that. Absolute ruin down there. You can see some great windows and some great views right over. Look at that. You see if nature takes over. We're on the second or third floor and look at the trees growing from up here. That's just incredible, isn't it? It's only been 20, 30 years. In fact, it's probably only been 15 because of the TV, the TV station. I don't need to go over the edge. Again, young man's game. Young man's game. Look at these doors. Look at the view out the windows here. You think they'll get water out of it? Not so sure it's still connected. Ah oh well. I'll just have to go thirsty. Look at these. Are these different from before? These are different ones as well, look. Ah, oh, they've painted over it, look at that. What a shame. They've actually painted over the old tiles. Ah, classic. Classic NHS. Classic government. Don't fix it, paint over it. And you can see into the windows across there. Look at that. More tile work as well. This tile's a bit more interesting. Of course, all the paint work is peeling. Got the old history. And then the modern, probably can't see them on the camera, but you've got the, uh, the windmills, the modern windmills now. That the old laughing plaster, yeah, it's still there. Oh, look at that. Somebody has climbed all the way up there, look at that. Braver people than me to get up to the top. Look at that, incredible. I won't be going up there. I bought a drone so I don't have to climb up there. That's exactly why I bought a drone. Uh, but interestingly, this is where you get up to the staircase. So uh, I could just about fit in there, you know that. But probably not on my own. If I get stuck, I'm not getting back out of there again. I'm stuck and I have to pee! It's quite incredible. I mean, the actual architecture and engineering that goes into this place. You can see many beams, some so up where they're meant to be. The ducts and pipes and all the electricals and stuff. Everything's still in place, but not in place, if you get what I mean. In the place that it was, but it's not in the place it should be. That makes no sense. I should be in the loony bin. Fuck me. Look at that tree. It's like it's got life of its own. Strange, like a brain. Oh, sharp. Show how much I trust that for. Hold on to the bars. Take it slowly, slowly. No need to rush. No, thank you. Not going any further anyway. So we're not going to walk in that bit. Look at that though. Got a good view of the clock tower. Look at that one, an interesting view.
Now it's not hard to see that the place has gone downhill since it was first opened. That's a given. But in 1971, that's when the patients started to revolt. Maybe two and a half thousand patients. But when the Scottish Union of Mental Patients kick-started, only 27 of the patients signed up. So I don't think they got much traction. I actually um, have a theory that there's probably a few politicians that were in, um, yes, that's a penis. That maybe they were politicians in their day? Now I can think of a fair few politicians nowadays that should be in a mental asylum. Put some politician names below if you think they should be in a mental asylum. There's a game for you. Do you remember your comments? <laughs> Do you remember your comments? Have a cup of tea. Thank you very much. Oh. I've done stupider things, but not many. We're now underneath. Oh. Some old hat. Tell you what. Lots of black bags. Hopefully not for dead bodies. Somebody's old seat there. Oh, look at that. Oh god. It's literally so dark the torch can't see a thing. There we go. That's the torch I needed. Oh, look at that. So it's not every day you can say you're underneath a mental asylum. Especially an abandoned one. Kind of crazy. This one is just a, a service, a service route. It's a bit wet. There's no pipe. Oh God, look at this. Hopefully that old pipe is in. Secure, oh God. Eerily quiet down here. There's old glove. So in theory you could walk from there to there, take a step. You can see the sun's still starting to glow through there actually. You can actually see a bit further. You can see there's a lot of water though, right? I'm not going that way. Sorry folks. Might be upside down, but that brick is beautiful. You know where the bricks came from? Carfin. But as I say, care in the community was just our way of cutting costs, throwing people out to the streets, basically. Now, I can be a testament of that. I had not been in an asylum before you judge. Um, but I did have a neighbour who had schizophrenia, and those were some of the worst days, years of my life. You can't imagine the turmoil, the sleepless nights of somebody screaming and shrieking and loud music and banging and shouting and jumping. He lived above me, the worst place they could be. It was hell, hell on earth. Now I used to have to phone the police and phone the neighborhood support team um, constantly, almost every day, multiple times a day for two, three years when I moved into my first apartment. It was hell, absolutely hell, and it's and it's absolute testament that care in the community doesn't work. And it wouldn't matter how nice this guy was on his best days, he was horrible on his worst days, and uh, it just made it impossible for me to live. I couldn't sleep. Uh, sleep deprived is uh, one reason why you end up in mental asylums. So he could have put me in there um, if it wasn't for care in the community. That is, of course, Th it doesn't work. The guy had no visitors, no family. 
he had a shit life and made my life shite as well. So care in the community doesn't work. It may work on some occasions, but to close down all these asylums and all the priories doesn't make any sense. Now I have some stories about my neighbour. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but some, sometimes the worst scenarios are actually quite funny. I can remember he was just screaming and banging and I went upstairs to ask him to keep the noise down and he answered the door with a spatula. Whether he was cooking or having some fun with the spatula, I have no idea because uh, he was making a hell of a noise. The guy's five foot four, if that. Probably a good six inches smaller than me. And he says, you're lucky I'm a pacifist. And then have to tell the police that you got um, attacked by a schizophrenic with a spatula. There will be some people who think I'm making light of mental health. If you are that person and made it this far, I challenge you to stay till the end. My aim is to balance the serious nature of mental institution with humour. I recognise where genuine mental health is an issue, that professional care is required and some very sad stories emerge of how society and the establishment has failed so many people. But if you can't laugh in the face of adversity, then you're in danger of living in oppression. I think programmes like Family Guy and comedians like Ricky Gervais do a far better point of raising awareness of how ridiculous humanity is by spinning it with humour and making it entertaining. Remove the laughter and all you're left with is silence and a rather sad, dull life. Worrying too much and being easily offended are a fast track to misery depression and ill mental health. A dark sense of humour will get you by in this world. My wife used to fart when she was nervous. She had all sorts of wonderful little idiosyncrasies. <laughs> you know, she used to fart in her sleep. <laughs> Sorry, I shared that with you. One night it was so loud it woke the dog up. <laughs> she woke up and got like, oh, was that you? I said, yeah, I didn't have the heart to tell. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she woke herself up. <laughs> Christ. Ah, but Will, she's been dead two years, and that's the shit I remember. <laughs> Wonderful stuff, you know? Little things like that. Yeah, but those are the things I miss the most. Okay, in the community, it wasn't the final nail in the coffin for this building. Um, it did get a second life. Now, that second life was Lanarkshire Television, a local broadcasting station for local news. You know the usual. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Tonight Show. Hope you're all set for a show that's going to be out of this world. The station was so well regarded that actually Lanarkshire TV, also known as LTV, then got the name Looney TV. It's as much to do with being a, a lunatic asylum as it is to do with the quality of the television broadcasting. As far as I can tell, the TV station closed its doors in the early noughties. Then after that, there was a big fire in 2004 and then another in 2016. So you can definitely see the, the scorching all around the building, especially in, inside when you peer through the windows. But even in the state it is now, its grandeur doesn't go unnoticed. And... You're talking about the old orphanage, one that burned down, which is part of the Wayne estate. They donated it after they built the tower. Let's go. Gotham Orphanage, um, not Gotham Asylum sadly, that would be much more appropriate in my view. The Batman, you know the one, the one with the pasty vampire from that film, what is it? Who's he? The Twilight movies, that's the one. For me, for me Robert Pattinson doesn't look like Batman, I like Keaton. I'm Batman. But I've not seen, I haven't seen Pattinson's rendition of Batman so I shouldn't judge. The Riddler grew up in the orphanage, which is kind of apt actually. Because the Riddler is the kind of guy who would have been in this mental asylum. This is all in your head, you're sick, twisted. How can you say that? You think you'll be remembered? You're a pathetic psychopath. Begging for attention. You're that guy. I know who they are. I know who they are. It's easy to be judgmental about places like this and think that it was full of lunatics and crazy people and whatever words you want to use that are probably not particularly PC these days. But interestingly, the Riddler was Edward Nashton, and I was watching uh, A Beautiful Mind last night, the one with the gladiator. 
Russell Crowe and Edward Nashton, uh, sorry, John, not the Riddler, John Nash, he was a crazy intelligent man. Many economic and mathematicians use his theories today, so that says a lot. And he had paranoia and schizophrenia. And, and then I always think about one of my favorite humans that ever lived. Where are we? That's 2010 AD, and this is the mighty Musée d'Orsay, home to many of the greatest paintings in history. Vincent van Gogh, or Van Gogh. Now, he was crazy, cutting off his ear for fuck's sake. That is crazy. That's batshit crazy. That's Batman crazy. And he would have been on a place like this. So we shouldn't judge. And you can see why places like this would actually be so good for that kind of person. Imagine being Vincent van Gogh and painting in here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the paints out. And I'm going to paint this joint because it's spectacular. Where do you think Van Gogh rates in the history of art? To me, Van Gogh is the finest painter in the world. Certainly the most popular great painter of all time. The most beloved, his command of colour, the most magnificent. He transformed the pain of his tormented life into ecstatic beauty. Pain is easy to portray, but to use your passion and pain to portray the ecstasy and joy and magnificence of our world, no one had ever done it before. Perhaps no one ever will again. To my mind, that strange, wild man fields of Provence was not only the world's greatest artist, but also one of the greatest men who ever lived. One of my favourite scenes in Beautiful Mind, there's a line. There's no point in being nuts if you can have a little fun. Jesus Christ, John. What a great line. If I had 20 billion, I would definitely spend five of them on this place and make it an amazing resort. Um, money could do amazing things to this place. What a spa it would be. Nice spa day out, get a massage here. Not by a, not by a mental asylum patient though. I joke about this hospital becoming a spa, but in its heyday, the twin clock tower asylum did actually boast quite the remarkable amenities. Thanks to North Lanarkshire Council's Cultural Museum Online, there's historic brochures and information pamphlets and they make for an interesting read. Beyond the literature promoting that the mental health unit was committed to respecting the needs and aspirations of its patients, providing care and treatment which respects the dignity of the individual, which facilitates a smooth and quick return home with appropriate follow-up care. Can't decide if it says Free Davies Rolo or if it used to say Pedo Davy and somebody's trying to scrape a F and an R into it. I'm pretty sure it used to say Pedo Davy. That's my guess. Let's hope Pedo Davy was um, in there and isn't so free. It also listed the on-site recreation facilities, both indoors and out, with welcoming gardens, countryside walks, libraries, billiards, football pitches, outdoor bowls, badminton courts, as well as its own farm, hairdressers, reservoir, train stations, shopping mall, and even its own power plant. The hospital, one of the largest in Scotland. If you think it looks big now, consider that vast buildings that have already been demolished within the estate, explaining their measurable rubble throughout the grounds. There were staff facilities such as on-site teaching and education, and although controversial now, the Chief Medical Superintendent Campbell Clark employed electroconvulsive therapy, a little fluid in them boots, you know what I mean, boys? which was associated with memory loss and confusion, not ideal for a person suffering from mental health issues. <laughs> How about it, you creep, you lunatic, mental defective? Let's hear it for Blue Goose Randall back in action. Nice shirt, Chesaroo. <laughs> Clark was the first person in Scotland to perform a lobotomy in attempts to control behaviour by severing connections in the brain's prefrontal cortex for conditions such as epilepsy and depression. He was the first advocate professional training of all staff. That's a plus and had a strong reputation for improving the actual conditions of the inmates. Huh. 
Hartwig Asylum Graveyard, 1896 to 1952. Please be respectful. Friends of Hartwood Popper Cemetery. The Hidden Souls. History of the Cemetery. Lanarkshire Lunatic Asylum opened its doors on the 14th of May 1895. The same year the cemetery received its first soul on the 24th of August. There are 1,255 identified souls within 634 graves here, with ages ranging from just 6 days to a reported 115 years old. Imagine the life that person would have seen. Each layer is 5 feet deep with 2, sometimes 3 bodies. Regardless of relationship, males and females were never buried together. No doubt separated souls due to Victorian values at the time. Graves are marked not by names, but by numbers of which a few are still visible. The last burial was in 1952 after the cemetery reached full capacity after being operational for 56 years. Contrary to belief, the funeral service, although basic, was dignified. The coffin, pine, the burial service brief. More often than not, only the grave digger and the clergyman in attendance. So you start to get the real sense of how sad and lonely life was in Hartwood. Just as we talked about in the community earlier, when you have serious mental health issues, Often you're forgotten by friends and family. Expecting care in the community to work only makes sense from an immoral financial viewpoint. Amongst those 1,255 souls is several World War I veterans who likely couldn't take the strain of war. There are many widows who came to Hartwood with a broken heart. And sadly, two babies. Siblings born within the walls of the asylum. Hard to not look at a tree like this and think of mental turmoil. Branches like this, you can imagine being in a Vincent van Gogh painting. I said earlier that I hadn't had a feeling of spookiness throughout the whole building, or coldness, or all the things that I felt before in other places. Well, now we're at the cemetery, I can tell you that feeling has quite changed. What a vibe, all these 1,255 people in this small space. I guess in prep of any video that I do occasionally you look at other people who have done the same video and seen how you can do it better and one of the things I've noticed that's absent from the videos on Hartwood that I have seen nobody's talked about the memorial, the cemetery and I guess that's the the real people who existed and lived and died in these very premises. These are the people it was all about. People are looking, but are they really remembering? Quite a sad and solemn place. Tell it makes you reflect and think. Well, out of interest. Is that noise? Well, out of interest, I wondered if there'd be any Martin Kellys. And uh, there's a Charles, a Felix, a John, and a Patrick. Uh, so possibly some relatives, but who knows? There's very few gravestones. Very few people noted. As a parent, the thought of any child dying is horrible. All these sad, lonely people, mentally ill, lonely, forgotten. Well, I guess that wasn't an experience I was anticipating. Back to the car and get my pants.
لا بقى هيتا لا صح 